One of the main causes of confusion when it comes to shared coordinates is that we often fail to geolocate our projects to begin with. And then, even when you do everything by the book, your Revit links might fall out of place for no apparent reason. In this video, I will demystify the topic of shared coordinates in Revit as well as provide the practical steps required for you to master Revit coordinates. I will also show you how the set coordinates feature can help simplify this process for you. So please note that this video will present the topic from the site design perspective. However, the best practices mentioned here are recommended for all disciplines using Revit. Let's start by understanding how Revit coordinates actually work and what are the various components that you should notice while working with shared coordinates in Revit. Part 1. 1 Sea Level While designing a building, all heights are measured based on the in entrance level to the building. Outside of the building, however, we measure the heights of each element with an absolute elevation, which means the elevation above or below sea level. Adding an architectural Revit level at zero elevation and calling it sea level is the most common method of allowing you to associate elements with sea level or absolute elevation in Revit. This is a must when you're building a site model since the sea level is used as a constraint for site elements such as walls and floors that are not a part of a building. These elements are usually designed and tagged in absolute elevation. It is also a must for URS, Unique Reference System Model, to keep all project teams aligned. Adding a sea level is also essential if you want to link a CAD survey file of your site into Revit, since a link CAD file should also be associated with a certain level. Also, using a dedicated sea level would make it much simpler to communicate with team members of other disciplines in the landscape design. When you name a level sea level, everybody knows what it means and in the long run it can make it easier to monitor and solve coordination issues. Part 2. Two coordinate systems to let you know where you are. There's more than one way of measuring and communicating our position on Earth. In Revit, we're using two main methods of specifying our project's location. The global system and the local system. So, let's get our terminology straight. Firstly, the global system, aka Geographic Coordinate System, or GCS. This is a well-known coordinate system, and it's composed of geodetic grid lines wrapped around our entire globe. You probably know these horizontal and vertical lines as latitude and longitude. In Revit, we use the GCS to geolocate our project, which means letting Revit know what is our position on Earth. So that's geolocation in Revit. Next, the local method, aka datum, or projected grid. Geolocation, simply put, is how we set the address of our project. But it's not a good way of measuring linear distances between elements in your model, since in smaller scale, we can lose accuracy. For this reason, every country has its own named local datum. This datum, or local system, is essentially a flat projected grid with a defined latitude and longitude coordinates at its origin. Each point on the grid is defined by an X and Y values and can also include a Z value to indicate the elevation from sea level. To make it simple, we're using a pin to locate a chessboard on a globe. Imagine the pin is located at the board's origin with a lat and long values, while the chessboard itself 
gives you the local coordinate system. In Revit, we use the survey point to represent the origin of this local system. Part three, three reference points to mess it all up. So we understand the sea level and we know the two coordinate systems, the global and the local. Now let's understand how the Revit universe works. In Revit, we have three coordination reference points and everything in your model relates to these three points in one way or another. First up, the internal origin. The internal origin is the center of the virtual Revit universe. And it is the only reference for Revit as a software to understand where things are placed. This means that all mathematical calculations are done according to this point, the internal origin. To ensure accuracy and due to mathematical limitations, your model should be more or less centered around this point. In fact, any element in your model that will be located more than 10 miles away from your internal origin in each direction may cause some serious technical issues. So the maximum size of a Revit project is a sphere with a 20 miles diameter. Since the internal origin is the center of the universe, it cannot be moved. So in site models, it is recommended to vertically align your internal origin with the sea level. And if your project is too far away from sea level, then you may decide to keep your internal origin in the project elevation. But remember, the leading principle should be to keep your project centered around the internal origin. Second, the survey point. As we learned before, when we talked about the local coordinate system, the survey point is here to define our location on Earth. Once we acquire coordinates in Revit, the survey point moves to the origin point of the local coordinate system or datum and its xy values will be 0, 0.00. If you want to move your survey point closer to your project, don't forget to unclip it first so it will move relatively to the origin of your local grid. Otherwise, you will mess up the shared coordinates. Third, we have the project base point. To be brief, the project base point is of no importance to the geolocation or coordination of your project, and you can move it freely without it affecting the project's location. This wasn't the case in earlier versions of Revit, only since version 2020. The project base point is mainly used as a project-specific reference point, and the team can decide where they want to position it. Usually it's placed at one of the building's corners and vertically located at the entrance level of the building. Part four, what actually happens when you set the location of your Revit model? In Revit, we use the shared coordinates method to establish a common understanding of the positions and distances between elements in the model and to ensure that all project participants share these positions and understandings. As we learned before, we can do it by speaking the common language, geolocation and local datum. When we define a shared coordinate system, we associate our internal origin with a certain position on a local grid datum. And this is what the acquire coordinates feature does. When we set the project location, we want to actually locate this internal origin on the globe and associate it with a certain address or a Latin long values. This is what the location feature in Revit does. This dualism can lead to some very strange situations. For example, you can have your project in the local Israeli grid, and at the same time, the location window in Revit will show the project is in Boston. This is, in short, where most coordination issues begin. When the local system and the global system, the geolocation, 
are not aligned. To solve this, we need to align them. But in Revit, these two coordination systems are not connected by default. So the only way to geolocate your file while making sure you use a conventional local system is if you acquire coordinates from a geolocated DWG file. However, in Revit, there is no way to manually access this list of local systems and associate your file with one. Consequently, if you acquire coordinates from a simple CAD file, you're at great risk to struggle with your coordinates later on in your project. Part 5. The Set Coordinates feature, making collaboration easy. At this point, you might be feeling a bit lost in the jungle of coordinate system, and it's safe to say we've all been there. This is why we added the Set Coordinates tool to the Environment for Revit toolset. It offers a simple way of bridging the gap between the global and the local systems while keeping an intuitive interface. This tool can actually help you in tons of situations, saving time and sanity throughout your project. So let's dive into five ways the Set Coordinates tool can help you master Revit coordinates. One, set coordinates. Some projects start with no available survey data, but shared coordinates are required to collaborate with team members. Use this option to simply enter the project address and its local datum, and voila, you just established shared coordinates. So from now on, any data you receive will go in the right place. Two, repair. If your existing shared coordinates are causing issues, the repair option is your savior. Just define the approximate location of your project and select the local datum to ensure the shared coordinates in your project are fixed. This option also allows you to adjust vertical inaccuracies and essentially move Revit's internal origin back to elevation zero in the sea level. Three, acquire. If you are unsure about the geolocation of your survey data or need an accurate URS file for your project team, the acquire option lets you get coordinates from any linked file while ensuring your project is also geolocated. This makes it the safest option of acquiring coordinates and it works with any linked file, CAD, Revit, or point cloud. Four, convert. Sometimes you get lucky and your project manager asks you to switch from one coordinate system to another. Don't worry, the set coordinates tool can seamlessly switch between datums with just a few clicks. Five, specify points. For surveyors who uses Revit, we added the specify points option. You can geolocate your file, select a local system, and assign coordinates by picking known points on your survey and specifying their coordinates. This can work with a PDF, a JPEG, a CAD file, or even based on a linked point cloud. You can define multiple points to get the correct angle from the true north of your project while achieving greater accuracy. You're welcome. Whether you're an architect, a surveyor, or a BIM coordinator, whether you're starting a new project or working on an ongoing one, a profound understanding of Revit's shared coordinates is crucial for seamless collaboration. And with the set coordinates tool by your side, you can be sure that your project will never get lost in space. I really hope this video provided more clarity and practical value to your daily work. If you would like to see some more in-depth information and a step-by-step -step tutorial, visit our YouTube channel or check out our website for our user guide. Thank you for watching.